Taking off in the typhoon, the planes of Admiral Halsey's third fleet start their sweep through the China Sea. Highlights of this action included the strike by Navy flyers at Indochina ports. Targets were oil refineries, docks, and warehouses, and shipping in the Saigon River. Sunk or damaged were 69 ships, totaling 197,000 tons. Two days later, the planes of the task force were striking at China itself. Hong Kong, Swatow, Amoy, and Canton were among the objectives. 23 planes were shot down in aerial combat. 64 planes were destroyed or damaged on the ground. Factories were strafed, and harbor installations were heavily pounded. Admiral Nimitz reported that the flyers had sunk or damaged an additional 104,000 tons of shipping. China Sea is no longer controlled by the Japs. RAF Lancasters wing their way toward Dresden in a massive blow involving more than 800 heavy bombers. A new type of German scarecrow bomb explodes in midair, simulating a direct hit on a bomber. Pathfinder flares and incendiaries mark the immediate targets. Another scarecrow bomb. The attack is in support of Russian armies moving toward this rail center on a front 50 miles away. Thousand six hundred and fifty tons of bombs are dropped during the night attack. Two days later, AAF flying fortresses follow up with a second assault on this German communication center. Two hundred and twenty-five tons of explosives are aimed at what remains of the freight yards. city of 625,000 population. The double blow is estimated to have virtually destroyed the entire city. The RAF bombs highways and viaducts. Every type of RAF combat plane is used in this onslaught on German transport troops and communications. Heavy bombers from the 8th and 15th Air Force groups strike at rail targets. Rocket firing typhoons peel off to strike at enemy installations and supplies. Explosives are dropped during this single day of all-out bombing and strafing. Seven 
1,500 Lancaster and Halifax bombers roar over Cologne to block roads and railroads leading across the Rhine and to destroy concentrations of German troops fleeing the city as the American First Army smashes into it. thousand tons of bombs hit the city, once fourth largest in Germany, now a pile of rubble and shattered buildings. The German scarecrow bomb demolishes a Lancaster. The drive to Cologne. The streets of Cologne are not far ahead. Tanks and infantry press forward on the road leading directly into the heart of the besieged metropolis. Our units report no house-to-house -house resistance by the Volkssturm. The enemy is pursued from street to street. Those attempting to flee in motor cars are repeatedly fired upon. are routed from their positions. A Jerry tank suffers a direct hit, and the crew leaps from the flames. Concussion rocks the handheld camera with its telephoto lens. <laughs> Nearby, the shell of the cathedral is still standing, almost intact except for holes in the roof. The edifice received no direct bomb hits in approximately 25 all-out raids on Cologne. Inside, the 700-year-old cathedral is bare, its religious relics having been removed to places of safety. Now seeing action with the Navy's Fleet Air Wing 1 and 2 in the Pacific is the PB-4Y2 Privateer, latest edition of the Consolidated Liberator class. The dominating feature of the privateer is the huge fin and rudder, which rises 30 feet, one-half inches off the ground. This replaces the twin platters of the PB-4Y1. Equipped with four 1,350 horsepower Pratt and Whitney double wasp engines, the plane carries two new teardrop waste turrets, housing 50 caliber twin mount machine guns. These replace the earlier handheld side waste guns and give the plane added protection with their 60 degree above and 95 degree below field of fire. Using any combination of demolition and armor-piercing bombs, depth charges, or mines, the Navy's newest workhorse can carry a potential bomb load of 8,000 pounds. Fully loaded, the plane has a patrol reconnaissance range of 2,630 miles and a cruising speed of 141 miles per hour. With the addition of the new side blisters, another Martin-type turret aft of the wing, a seven-foot extension to the nose of the plane, and the sweeping fin and rudder, the fuselage still retains its familiar box-like lines. Task Force 58 under Vice Admiral Mark A. Mitcher as it proceeds through heavy seas on its way toward the Tokyo area. Objective is to tie down the Japanese Air Force so that it can't intercept the large force of transports, landing craft, and supply ships heading northward for landings on Iwo Jima. Approaching the target. Pilots leave the briefing room on their way to the planes. Takeoffs are imperiled by the heavy seas. 1,500 planes take part in the attack. Heavy storm clouds blanket the Tokyo area. Mount Fujiyama. 
Interceptor. Japanese aircraft factories are struck heavily. The attack continues for more than nine hours. Next day, it's followed up with another attack lasting more than eight hours. Throughout the attacks, the enemy offers only slight resistance. Our losses amount to nine fighter planes and four pilots. Four of Japan's largest and most important engine and assembly plants received devastating blows during the two-day strike. Strafing planes caught on the airfields. About 2,000 are found on the ground. Altogether, 659 enemy planes are destroyed in the air and on the ground. The Battle of Iwo Jima was the toughest fight in the 168-year-old history of the Marine Corps. It was tough because of the shifting volcanic sand of the beach. It was tough because Marines, moving up to assault Iwo's entrenched garrison, were constantly exposed to fire from the thousands of Jap positions on the eight-square-mile island. It was tough because the rough and broken country of rocks and caves made it easy for the enemy to infiltrate. Individual units faced sudden attack from any side. Mortar and small fire reduced forward progress to a slow yard-by-yard -yard maneuver. Thousands of tons of explosives were sizzled into the pork chop shaped island and 20,000 Japs were killed. But marine casualties were high too. The removal of wounded men from Iwo Jima was first carried out by small craft returning to hospital ships lying offshore. After the airfields had been captured and resurfaced, air evacuation from Iwo began. The wounded were carried in relays from field hospitals on the airstrip to the waiting R4D. Medical attention was never interrupted. Men continued to receive life-giving whole blood as corpsmen carefully placed them aboard the hospital plane. To care for the wounded on the trip back, were Navy nurses from one of the fleet hospitals. This air evacuation from Iwo has been acclaimed as one of the outstanding medical achievements of the war. Hospital planes were operating off Iwo airfields soon after the airstrips had been captured, long before the Japs had been entirely wiped out. The biggest obstacle in driving out the Japs were the caves and entrenchments dug deep in the volcanic rock. Some of these were up to 1,800 yards long and had 14 entrances.
In this cave, these Japs were taken prisoner after hiding for 10 days. The men were weak from lack of food and water. After stripping and searching them, the MPs marched the prisoners to the stockade for questioning. Many of the Jap gun installations blended so well with the surroundings that they weren't discovered until they opened fire. The emplacements were so situated that they could not be hit from either the sea or the air. Infantry had to wipe them out. Before Iwo Jima was completely captured, the CBs had both airfields in operation. Among the first to use these newly won strips was a B-29, making an emergency landing. If Iwo hadn't been taken, the super fortress would have had to land in the sea. Today, Iwo Jima, 675 miles from Tokyo, is an operating base from which bombers can hit the furthest reaches of Japan with the protection of land-based fighters. Sweeping widely through the Ryukyu Islands, elements of the powerful United States Pacific Fleet began the softening up of this strategic chain of islands. It was part of the preparations for eventual landings by U.S. ground forces. While speedy ships of the 5th Fleet move into firing range of the islands and let go with their heavy guns against shore installations, hundreds of aircraft took off from the fast carriers of Vice Admiral Mark A. Mitchell's task force. Okinawa, one of the main islands of the group, was hit hard as Navy planes wrecked warehouses, pier facilities and transports. Japanese airfields received a thorough going over, and many planes were wrecked on the ground. During the operation, enemy defenders of the Ryukyu swarmed out to attack the fleet. Accurate fire on the part of the gunners knocked down six of the Japanese aircraft and forced the remainder to withdraw from the scene. preceded the landings on the Ryukyu chain, just south of Japan itself. Mm -hmm. 